Good morning everyone. Welcome back to analysis of indeterminate structures. In today's session, let us consider one more problem on trusses. Let us start this problem. The very first step here is to find out the degree of static indeterminacy. If you observe the given truss structure, you can call this as figure A. Here, all the members of this particular truss are meeting at one single joint called E. Therefore, we can use the formula number of members minus 2 to find the degree of static indeterminacy. If you count the number of members, we have 1, 2, 3 and 4. Therefore, it is 4 minus 2 and we get the degree of static indeterminacy as in previous sessions, whatever the problems we have solved regarding trusses, we have got the degree of static indeterminacy as 1. So here in this particular example, we are getting the degree of static indeterminacy as 2. So based on this number, we have to assume the redundance. Here I am going to take the diagonal members BE and DE as redundants. So assume the members, you can take any members here. So, assume redundants as BE and DE. Clear? So, this completes step number 1. In step number 2, to find the member forces in this particular truss structure because of the externally applied load, you should consider a diagram of truss without these redundants. So, this is A, B, C and D. This is also 0, this is also 0 and you should consider the external load. We have horizontal point load 50 kN and vertical point load 25 kN acting at joint E. All other details remain as it is. Clear? So, this particular diagram can be called as PS, that is, member forces in a given structure because of the externally applied load. Since we have only one joint here, you should consider that particular joint to find the member forces. And here we are going to apply method of joints to analyze this particular joint. This is 50 kN and 25 kN. You have to write the free body diagram of E. We have four forces meeting at E. So 50, 25 among four forces, two forces are known. And we have one more force called FEA. So, this is joint E. So, this is a free body diagram of joint E. I have one inclined member here. Just resolve that into horizontal and vertical component. And mark this angle as theta. And look here. These are the corresponding angles. So, if you observe in the original structure here, I have marked this particular angle as theta. They have given 30 degree here. This is the alternate angle. Therefore, the value of theta here will be 30 degrees. And if you apply the equilibrium conditions, summation of fx equals to 0, right side force as positive. So, I have 50 minus this horizontal component FEA cos theta. Theta is 30 degree equals to 0. If you solve this particular equation, I am going to get the value of FEA as 57.73 kilo Newton and it is positive. Therefore, call it as tensile force. Next, one more equilibrium condition. Summation of Fy equals to 0 upward force as positive. We have FEC, then minus 25 
then this vertical component F E A sin theta, theta is 30 degree here. So substitute the value of F E A here and solve, you are going to get the value of F E C as minus 3.87 kilo Newton and it is compressive. So I have got the member forces in this particular structure, just transfer the forces here, F E A this one is positive away from the joint 57.73 kilo Newton and F E C negative towards the joint this is 3.87 kilo Newton. So this completes step number 2. Now in step number 3 we should find the member forces in this particular truss structure because of unit load only. So here in this particular problem we should apply the unit load at redundant force BE and redundant force DE separately and we should analyze the same structure by using the concepts of method of joints. So let us consider step 3 now. So in step 3 again we are going to consider the same truss structure while applying unit load you should remove the externally applied loads therefore at E I am removing these two loads 50 and 25 this is A, B, C and D first I consider the redundant force B that means I am going to apply unit load at BE so away from the joint positive 1 kilo Newton and the redundant force DE is taken as 0 this is called figure C which gives me the values of K since I have two redundant force here call it as K1 unit load applied along the member BE. Now as usual we have only one joint that is joint E. At joint E we have four members AE, BE, CE and DE. Among four members one member is zero and at one member we have applied unit load. Therefore we left with two members that is AE and CE. Therefore we should find the forces in these two members. As usual consider joint E that means write the free body diagram of joint E here. We have F E C and this is 0 and we have 1 kilo Newton inclined load and one more inclined member force that is F E A. Just resolve these inclined members into horizontal and vertical components. Here we get two different values of theta. So let us consider this as theta 1 and the 1 kN inclined component here consider this as theta 2. If you observe the original truss structure, so this is considered as theta 1 and this is considered as theta 2. So theta 1 is 30 and theta 2 is 45. So as usual apply the equilibrium conditions summation of fx equals to 0 right side force as positive. Look here I have these two horizontal forces which are acting to the left side therefore it is minus FEA cos EA is accompanied by theta 1 cos theta 1 then minus 1 cos theta 2 equals to 0. So you know the values of theta 1 and theta 2 here, the substitute and solve, you are going to get the value of FEA as minus 0.82 kilo Newton. Since it is minus, call it as compressive force. Then 
summation of Fy equals to 0, upward forces as positive. Just consider the upward forces here, Fec, then plus 1 sin theta 2, this is theta 2, then plus Fea sin theta 1 equals to 0. I know the value of Fea, it is minus 0 0.82, substitute here and solve to get the value of force in member EC. It is minus 0 0.30 kilo Newton, call it as compressive force. Immediately mark these values on the structure, this is 0 0.82 minus therefore towards the joint. And this is also minus 0.3 towards the joint. Clear? So I have got the member forces in the truss structure because of the unit load applied along the redundant BE. Now you should do the same procedure to get the member forces in the same truss structure because of the unit load applied along one more redundant force considered that is DE. So again consider the same truss structure. So here as usual this is A, B, this is C and this is D, this is E. While applying unit load we should remove the externally applied loads and now the member force in BE is taken as 0 and Along DE, we are going to apply the unit load in a positive manner. So call this particular diagram as figure D and this gives me the values of K2. Consider joint E now. This is FEC and this is 1 kilonewton. And here it is FEA. Here also I have got two inclined components. Just resolve them into horizontal and vertical components. Now if you observe the original truss, here the value of theta is 45 degree and here the value of theta is 30 degree. You can call this as theta 1 and this as theta 2. Here for this particular joint theta 1 is 30 degree and theta 2 is 45 degree. See ne these theta values need not be same. Here according to this problem I am getting the values like this. That's it. Now as usual apply the equilibrium condition summation of fx equals to 0 right side forces as positive. I have 1 cos theta 2 then minus FEA cos theta 1 equals to 0. If you solve this you are going to get the value of FEA as it is 0.82 kN and it is positive therefore call it as tensile force and summation of Fy equals to 0 upward forces as positive. I have FEC then plus 1 sin theta 2 then plus FEA sin theta 1 equals to 0. Carefully apply the values of theta 1 and theta 2 here. Theta 1 is 30 and theta 2 is 45 and you know the value of FEA. We have got it as 0.82. Substitute here and solve this particular equation to get the value of FEC. The answer is minus 1.12 kilo Newton and it is compressive in nature. Immediately transfer the values. FEA is positive 0.82 therefore towards away from the joint and FEC is negative therefore towards the joint 1.12 kilo Newton. This completes step number 3. In step number 4, with the help of flexibility matrix equation, we are going to find out the unknown forces that is member force BE and member force 
DE. To prepare the standard table in step number 4, we require these details like the values of peers K1 and K2. So in step number 4, just consider the flexibility matrix relation which is given by D minus DL equals to F into P because this has equation number 1. You all know here the D is 0, therefore this is given by since we have two redundants here that is degree of static indeterminacy as 2, the order of this matrix will be 2 cross 1 and F is 2 cross 2, you know F is always a square matrix and P is also 2 cross 1. So this will become D1L and D2L. This is F11, F21, F12, F22. This will be P1 and P2. Call this as equation 2. So now to find these forces P1 and P2, we should prepare the standard table. And the elements like D1L and D2L will be equals to summation of PS K1L divided by AE. Since we have D1L here, you have to take K1 here, PS is common. So here in D2L, PS K2L divided by AE. So if you get degree of static indeterminacy as 3, then you get one more term called K3. Then for D3L, you have to use the formula like summation of PS K3L divided by AE. And to find the elements of this F matrix, F11 is equals to summation of K1 square L divided by AE and F12 and F21 are symmetrical and they are equal to summation of K1 into K2 into L divided by AE and F22 will be equals to summation of K2 square L divided by AE and we are going to get all these values in a standard table. Clear? So now we have members then PS K1 K2 then length then the product of PS K1 L then this one PS K2 L K1 square L K2 square L and lastly it is K1 K2 into L and this you know PS K1 K2 are all represented in terms of kilonewton and length in terms of meters. Clear? Now write down the details of members here. We have totally four members AE, BE, CE and finally it is DE. So after plotting the standard table, just fill the respective values in this particular table by referring the previous steps. So here by referring figure B, we can fill the details of PS, by referring figure C and D, we can fill the details of K1 and K2. Now let us fill this column that is length. We have the length of member EC as 3 meters fill that for the remaining members they have given angles by applying trigonometric functions we can get the length of these three members for example if you consider triangle ACE this 
this is A, this is C and this is E and this angle is given as 30 degree. So if you apply sin theta here, sin 30 equals to the length of C is 3 meters and this is AE. So if you solve this particular equation, you are going to get the length of AE member as 6 meters. In the same manner, you can find the length of the members BE and DE. For BE, you should consider the triangle BCE and the angle is 45 degree and this length is given as 3 meters and here again if you apply sine component sine 45 equals to 3 by BE if you solve this particular equation you are going to get the length of BE as 4.24 meters since we have the same angle for this particular portion also the length of DE is also equals to 4.24 just fill the details here the length of member AE is 6 meter and for BE and DE is 4.24 meters. Now, these are all just simple calculations. For PS, for this particular column, you should get the product of PS, K1 and L. And here, it is PS, K2 and L. And this is K1 square into L. Here, it is K2 square into L. And here, it is K1, K2 into L. Clear? If you do that simple calculation, you can fill the remaining details easily. Here, for member AE, we get minus 284.03. This is 0. And this is 3.483. And here, we get 0. And for this, this column, PSK to L, for member a e it is plus 284.03 0 then this is 13 and here also it is 0 here I am going to get 4.03 this is 4.24 0 0.27 and this has 0 this is again 4.03 0 3.76 4.25 4 and the last column that is k1 k2 into l is minus 4.03 0 1 and 0 if you do the summation for this particular column minus 280.55 and this is plus 297.03 and this is plus 8.54 this is plus 12.03 and for the last column, it is minus 3.03. Now, look here. We got all the values required in this particular equation. Just substitute the respective values here. D1L is this one. So, you will just substitute here. This is D1L. This is D2L. Clear? And this is F11, F22 and this is F12 or F21 substitute this is minus 280.55 divided by AE and here it is plus 297.03 divided by AE and this is plus 8.54 divided by AE and this is last column minus 3.03 divided by AE this one plus 12.03 divided by E. So just substitute in equation 2. So we get minus of minus plus 280.55. I'll take AE outside. We get plus 280.55 because minus into minus plus and this is plus into minus minus 297.03 equals to. Here also we can take out 1 by AE outside so we get F11 8.54 and this is minus 3.03 here also it is minus 3.03 and this one plus 12.03 here we have P1 and P2 so just cancel this AE on both the sides now 
to get the values of these p1 and p2 you can solve this particular equation either with the help of calculator or manually so just send this matrix this side so you get inverse of this matrix therefore this will become p1 p2 equals to inverse of this particular matrix 8.54 minus 3.0 03 minus 3.03 12.03 inverse multiplied by this dl matrix 280.55 minus 297.03 we are going to get this is 2 cross 2 this is 2 cross 1 the values of p1 and p2 as p1 is 26.46 and P2 is minus 18.03 and P1 is called as FBE and P2 is FDE the redundant forces so this completes step number 4 in step number 5 we are going to find the final member forces in the given with the help of simple equation so in step number five with the help of this basic equation that is pf equals to ps plus kp now here since we have two redundant forces pf is given by ps plus k1 p1 plus k2 p2 so you can call this as equation 3 and this as equation 4 so now we just prepare the standard table to get the final member forces in the given truss. So again we require the details of members, then PS, then K1, K2, P1, P2 and if you want you can do the product of K1 P1 and K2 P2 in a separate column or else you can directly write P of here and finally the nature of force. We have totally four members, member AE member BE, member CE and member DE. Just fill these details from the previous steps. You all know by referring figure B, C and D. We can get these details and P1, P2 just now in previous steps we got these values and this redundant forces P1 and P2 is common for all the members. I will just show you how to calculate this PF for one member that is for member AE. The PF will be PS value is 57.73 then the respective K1 is minus 0.82 and the respective P1 value is 26.46 plus the K2 values positive 0.82 and P2 is minus 18.03. So if you solve this particular equation you are going to get the value of PF as plus 21.25 kilo Newton. So you can mark it as tensile force. Like this if you apply the respective values in this particular equation you can get the final member forces in these particular members. So just note on the final values for member BE it this is 26.46 for member CE it is 8.39 and for member DE it is minus 18.03 based on the signs that is positive or negative you can mark the nature of force if it is positive consider it as tensile if it is negative consider it as compressive force now immediately transfer the final force on the given truss structure this 
is A, this is B, this is C, this is D and at E we have two loads, one is 50 kilonewton and another one is 25 kilonewton, this is joint E, this mark the forces, AE tensile force, here also we have tensile force and this is also tensile force, this is compressive. Tensile force away from the joint, compressive force towards the joint. The values are 21.25 kilonewton and this is 26.46 kilonewton. This is 8.39 kilonewton and finally this is 18.03 kilonewton. You can call this particular diagram as figure E which gives the values of PF that is final member forces. This completes the analysis of trusses by flexibility matrix method. In this particular module, we have analyzed the different types of continuous beams with sinking and no sinking type, frames with sway and no sway and also in trusses we have considered a truss with degree of static indeterminacy 1 and degree of static indeterminacy 2. With this I would like to conclude this particular module that is flexibility matrix method. Thank you.